So what is up guys, Nick here, helping you to master your technology should you buy iPhone 12 in 2023. That is the topic of today's video. Now the iPhone 12 can still be found at Apple stores actually in 2023 at a price of, let's check it out here. So we'll go to the Apple store, we scroll down, pick iPhone, and then we'll go down to the iPhone 12. Instead of having the iPhone 11 now, they have the iPhone 12 still available. So 11 dropped from the official lineup. You'll see right here, blue, purple, green, white, black, product red. Now let's go ahead and see the storage capacity. So 599 for 64 gig. Now this could be a good deal for some people. We'll talk about why I don't think it's the best deal, but you could see 649 for 128 gig. So that's $50 less than a 13 and you could get the same gig. So that's going to be a tough sale and 749 for 256 gig. Now, not everybody buys these phones outright. If you are buying it on a plan, it's gonna be a little bit less per month, but keep in mind that the iPhone 14 model is only like 120 more, maybe a little bit more than that, but it's it's not too much more. If you just save an extra 100, 200 bucks, maybe go up a few bucks in your monthly plan. And then the 13 is, is gonna be a few bucks less in your monthly plan and you'll get the newer notch you'll get the upgraded battery life and the better cameras on the rear the iphone 13 as well will also give you a little bit more performance as well and something closer to the iphone 14 and there's a higher storage capacity of 512 gig if you want that so the real question is in this video is the iphone 12 worth it after these years, these couple of years, this is a 2020 smartphone, or should you just spring for a newer 14 or a 13? Let's talk about it here. So the iPhone 12 launching in 2020, right in the midst of the pandemic, this phone does have an Apple A14 Bionic chipset, 2815 milliamp hour battery. It also has a dual camera on the rear, a 6.1 inch display. This is an OLED display by apple and this also is super retina xdr so similar to these newer phones 60 hertz panel and overall it doesn't really have a ton more than that you will get yourself the latest version four gigabytes of ram on board and this thing also does have nvme storage so pretty fast just like the newer phones on here but overall you know this is kind of what started the squared body here and then if you take a look apple really hasn't changed too much with the newer phones kind of keeping this design around so at least if you get this phone you're still getting the same modern look and design but that camera will let people know this is not the newer iphones because they did turn those cameras on a diagonal okay so what about the display now when you compare it to something like an iphone 14 you're essentially getting the exact same display there is one critical difference in sunlight the 14 is substantially brighter not a crazy amount like the pros, but it's noticeable. So even the 13 is noticeably brighter outdoors. This is why I think the 13 might be the better option if you just wanna go up a little bit in the price. The 13 is the sweet spot I feel like in terms of the value right now. But the real problem is that you can get smartphones from Android manufacturers with much better displays, 120 Hertz panels for cheaper the iPhone 12. So from a value perspective and not having this large notch up at the top, from a value perspective, I don't think the iPhone 12 offers a great display value. It's good. It's an OLED. It's fine. But at this point, OLED's not really special. Most phones have it. You know, it's, it's just not the best display out there. It's just good enough on the phone design, though, I still think is incredible. You know, squared edges, light body feels lighter than these two phones. And you know, it still feels industrial, although at this point it's becoming standard because Apple keeps it around forever. They don't change enough to make it feel different. So having this phone on the market for the third year already just feels like it's becoming the standard now. It doesn't feel really super special like it did in 2020. But if you've never had this phone, it will feel special. If you had an older rounder phone, you might love having this newer, you know, squared body that you didn't have since you maybe your iPhone 4S or 5S. So that's kind of how I feel there about display and body. The build, this one feels a little cheaper, honestly, than the 13 and the 14. These have a little bit more weight. They just feel a little bit more solid than the iPhone 12. Not that the 12 don't feel solid. It just feels a little bit lighter, a little bit cheaper 
in my opinion, and the price reflects that it is a little bit cheaper at this point. Remember, the iPhone 12 when it first came out was at the same price point as these two phones right here. So moving on to the actual platform, the actual software, you know, we are running the latest version of iOS 16.2, but here's my problem with this phone right here. We're going, this is going into the third year. This phone right here has software updates for years to come, a couple years, three years maybe. But why would you spend 600 on this phone when you could spend, you know, an extra 50 bucks, get a 13 and get a year or two more of software support. Apple's A15 in the iPhone 13 was so darn good. They kept it around in the iPhone 14. They don't usually do that. So, you know, this is a better chip on the iPhone 13 and this is not a comparison, but I'm trying to help you get the best value. And I think long-term investing in the iPhone 12 right now, if you're going to keep it long term, you know, I wouldn't save the money. I'd go straight to the 13, honestly, just because in terms of software, Apple really updates their phones very well. But you're going to get less on the iPhone 12. This one's going to get dropped before the 13, but it's still going to be a while. So it's not a big deal right now. But down the line, if you keep your phone five years, it will matter. Now, in terms of performance, we are looking at 14. And the thing is, is that nobody is really complaining about performance on iPhone 12, 12 Pro, 12 Pro Max ever. I've never heard anybody get in the comments. All these phones are slow because they never were. The A series chips are always overpowered. This one was incredibly overpowered at the time as well. And it shows to this day, this phone can outperform many Android phones that are brand new with Snapdragon chipsets in terms of just everyday smooth, the average person would probably be like, man, this thing performs good for being an old phone. And that's just because of how well optimized Apple does it with their A series chips and iOS. So on here, I would say performance, not an issue. When I am talking to, you know, Siri, cause it's activating on my iPhone 14. When I am using the iPhone 14, I look at this and I'm like, is this an iPhone 12 again? Yes, apps do open first. And some people are gonna say, well, the thermal design and the chipset is better design than the 14. You know, my 14 is so much faster. It is a little bit snappier, don't get me wrong, but honestly, it hasn't changed anything in my life day to day when it comes to using this phone over something like an iPhone 12. So I can give it props for the A14 still performing darn well for all of these years. 14 is a little snappier, 13 slightly snappier, but it's, again, if you wanna feel that more premium feel, you gotta go to the iPhone 13 Pro or the iPhone 14 Pro. Those are the phones that really feel snappier than this phone right here. So performance is okay if you want to invest in this thing at this point in 2023. Switching over to the rear cameras, dual camera setup, 12 megapixel. What I always love about the standard iPhone line, the regular line, is just how easy the cameras are to use. These cameras, let me put my little 4 GT in there. These cameras right here, they're just incredibly easy. They don't really require you to know a lot about cameras. And I like how the 12 line just doesn't have a lot going on. It's not super pro, anything like that. It's a really good standard camera for the average user. There is a little bit you can dive into. And then of course in the app store, if you wanna play around with some pro apps, you can get there. But the iPhone 12 definitely is more of a standard mainstream style camera. And it performs fantastic in 2000. And 22 front facing camera is a 12 megapixel variety. This is closer to the iPhone 11 though. I do like the upgrades that came to the iPhone 14 on the front, which really brought a, you know, an action mode, a little bit better quality on the front. So, you know, this is not the best in the world, but it's really darn good. And one thing that really stinks about a lot of Android phones, I like, I love Android phones, but something that really stinks about them is that most of their front facing cameras are just garbage. Apple don't really put garbage front facing cameras. So even if you get an older iPhone, you get a really good selfie quality and it's not too close to your face, which is another thing a lot of Android phones do. So I can recommend this for social media, front facing camera, rear camera. It's still pretty good if you find this on a steal of a deal on some other platforms instead of buying it at full retail. And what about the actual battery life on this phone? What I like about the 13s and the 12s is that even if you knock it down to low power mode, you are getting yourself still, you know, the same 60 Hertz. So you can rock it like that all day and it doesn't really affect performance too much. I could say the battery life is okay on the iPhone 12. It's nothing to, to be impressed about. You know, this one had a little bit of a smaller size and just didn't really over impress me, but it's a good day for the medium, the regular user. It's fine. You know, you're going to plug this into your car charger. You'll probably leave with hundred percent in the morning. I think most people can get through a day quite easily with the iPhone 12. 
I don't think it's gonna impress anybody and be like going into the next day. That's not anything I've ever experienced with this phone. And with later updates, I have noticed the phone does get slightly warmer than it used to. Um, I don't know if that's due to the chipsets or whatever, but it's just a hair warmer than it used to be. Nothing like some of the older iPhones that just get super warm. Battery life, just it's about a day with medium use in my experience. I also can say that this was the year that Apple started really improving, you know, phone call quality and stuff like that. So this is really good 5G on here and everything just kind of performs well in this category as well. So that's gonna pretty much wrap it up here. Audio was dual speakers and they got louder in the 14. So if you're looking for powerful speakers, you'll wanna go to the new phones always, but this is still fine for the dual speaker setup. Bringing it all home here for the iPhone 12. Honestly, my favorite thing about the iPhone 12 would probably be buying this thing used, you know, not buying it new. Because if you find this thing used, people are gonna be getting rid of this for much cheaper than Apple's retail prices. I would not swing for this brand new. You can see you can find some of these phones at around 400 bucks here. Now we're talking about a deal because you're getting phones that are half the price as these, you know, the 14 and pretty close overall. But when you go to the Apple, when you, but when you buy it at retail prices, like the full retail MSRP, no, I just cannot recommend this right now at MSRP. But if you find it used, you find it on a deal, it is a go. Go pick yourself up a 12 and rock out. It's gonna be pretty good in 2023, just not the best. If you're looking for retail value deals, I think the 13 still holds its value pretty well. So pick the 13 if you're looking for brand new. That's gonna be the better deal right there. And if you're looking for an even better deal, you can actually look out for a used iPhone 13 Pro, which might actually come in at a close to the $700 price point of a new 13. So keep that in mind. Let me know if you wanna see that comparison down below. Thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and let me know, are you picking up an iPhone 12 in 2023? I'll catch you on the next episode. Nick here, be sure to be well and peace.